Good morning, my single friends. I am Julia Miller, and I want to invite you to join me for Tea Time and Prayer this morning as we talk about why I am here. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? Why am I even here? Why am I here at this time in this place? Here's the good news, is that in Isaiah 43, it says that I have summoned you by name. I have called you. I have redeemed you. This is God talking, saying that he knows your name. He knows your place. And we don't have to wander through life wondering what our life purpose is. We're going to talk about this because so many people that you and I encounter wonder, you know, what is my life purpose? Why am I here? Here's the great thing is we're going to be talking out of Ephesians 1. In Ephesians 1, he says that he chose us in advance that we would praise him and that we would glorify him. I want you to join me over the next few minutes as I'm gonna be talking about what does that really look like for us to be in that place of praise and glorifying him. If you don't know who I am, my name is Julia Miller. I'm the director and I'm the founder of Citywide Singles. I, I'm gonna pray for you really quick and then we're gonna just jump right here into Ephesians 1 this morning. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Father God, that you give us mental and emotional clarity. God, I thank you for peace. I just speak peace over each and every person here today. God, I thank you and I praise you that you go with us and before us and that the glory of the Lord would be our rear guard. And we thank you, God, that you're ministering to us through your word this morning and that um, you are you have called us by name. You've got a plan and you've got a purpose for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you guys to be excited this morning because God does have a plan and he's got a purpose for your life. And one of those purposes for your life is that we would praise him and that we would bring him glory and honor. Um, Ephesians 1, I just started reading through this this morning, but he said before he made the world, God loved us and he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault. Really to be holy and without fault? How is this even possible? If you're anything like me, you know all the mistakes that you've made and even the pitfalls that you sometimes fall into over and over again. But when God called us, he knew our name. He called us by name. He formed us in our mother's womb and he made us to be holy in his image. Remember, God created us in his own image. And so he sees us as what he intended us to be. He doesn't see us with all of our, our mistakes. Um, here's another verse in Ephesians 1 where he says that God decided in advance to adopt us as his own family. So he adopted us into, into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but this is really good news to me. <laughs> that God chose to adopt us. He chose in advance before he ever created us that he wanted a family and that he was going to create us in his own image and that he wanted to adopt us unto his own and he did this through Christ Jesus. This is really pretty powerful stuff because this is a book that Paul is actually writing from prison. Some of you know this, that Ephesians was... Um, written by Paul, and some of you know Paul uh, wrote like two-thirds of the New Testament. And a lot of the books that he wrote was while he was in prison. And so we're, we've been in a series about the power of praise, which comes from a book of Merle Carruthers, and he was a military chaplain, and he tells a lot of military stories in there, but one of which was where he got stuck someplace where he couldn't get back to where he was serving, and or at least not in time for when he was supposed to be back on duty. Anyway, and he, one of the things he talks about is that he grew up very poor, and growing up in a poor family, um, they were accustomed to people coming by the house and giving them charitable gifts. And so as he grew up, he resented people trying to give him things because he felt like if he didn't earn it, um, it, it just wasn't a, a good gift. He was used to um, people giving his family handouts and it was sort of, I'm sure it made him feel like they just felt sorry for his family. So he had a very difficult time receiving what God had for him. And so God had to teach him this through... Um, 
through just pouring out his love on him. And so he tells a story about where he got stuck someplace um, and he couldn't get back to the base where he was supposed to be serving in the time that he was supposed to be there. And he had been speaking somewhere and he had met a pilot. He had a connection with a pilot uh, who lived in the area where he was stuck at. And the pilot said, you know what, let me see what I can do. Let me call my commander. And his commander said, you know what, yeah, I, I need to get in a few of my flying hours. Just have him come out at uh, uh, 0600 and we'll, we'll, we'll get him there. Don't worry about it. So he spent the night with the, with the pilot that he knew, this Air Force pilot that he knew. And the next morning they walked out onto the runway at 6 o'clock in the morning. And uh, there's all these planes, these uh, four engine planes, big planes, uh, out on the runway. So he's looking around trying to find where's the little, you know, the little cargo plane or whatever it is that he thought <laughs> this guy was going to try to get his flying hours in. <laughs> and the pilot, or the, yeah, the pilot that had uh, hosted him the night before says, well, here's the plane. And he's like, are you kidding me? He was like, this plane was huge. It was the biggest plane on the airstrip. And it, and he walks up the stairs thinking, oh my gosh, this can't be happening. And he gets in there, he's the only one in there, aside from the pilot that was gonna be flying the plane. And, and the pilot came back and asked him if he was comfortable. He said, you know, nothing, this was like a luxury plane that he was on, that he was being flown back to his, back to his base, um, just to make sure that he could get back in time. And he just kept shaking his head thinking, God, I, I didn't need all this. God, all I wanted was just a, you know, a little cargo plane would have been fine. I would have sat, you know, wherever. And God was showing him that, you know what, I want to do this because I love you. I, I want to put you in a nice place. I want, I want you to see that I want to lavish my love on you. And I just had to wonder how many times do we hold back the gifts of God simply because we don't feel deserving of those things. We didn't, he didn't do anything to earn that, uh, that ride on that plane, this luxury plane that was, you know, the pilot was getting in his hours kind of thing. He was like, why? Why am I on this luxury plane all by myself just to be flown back? Anyway, here's the point is that we are called to glorify him. We are called to praise him. You know, even in prison, Paul managed to praise God. He said, um, and this is in Ephesians 1, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus, your love for God's people, I have not stopped thanking Him. Uh, I have not stopped thanking God for you and praising Him constantly. Okay, this is Paul in prison with chains on his arm. I don't know if you've been to Rome, but I saw the chains <laughs> that, that were on Paul's arms. Paul was being held in a prison, and I won't go into the reasons why. It's not that he committed a crime, but he was being held in, in, in chains. But he is praying constantly. Not only was he praying and he prays, he was writing. He's writing these letters, in, in this case, to the, the Church of Emphasis, which was a church that he started. And he said... Um, he goes on to say that he was praying that he would that God would give them a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that they might know him better. Okay? So here's here's the point is that even in chains Paul was able to thank God. He was able to praise him. He says he was praising him constantly. Okay? So we're called to thank God. We're called to praise God, but we're also called to um, to glorify him and so sometimes we don't understand what that means and I don't even know that I fully understand it but here's what I do know is that I got a little lesson in this last summer when I was uh, selling a home to a retired pastor and his wife they had been in another state and they because of their retirement they were they still had money coming in, but it wasn't the kind of money that they were accustomed when they were both working their jobs. Um, like I said, he was a pastor, she had been uh, an educator, and uh, she kept saying, you know, okay, this is what we can qualify for, and I, I kept showing them, oh, this is what that house buys, and she kept saying, no, no, whatever we buy, it has to, it has to be to the glory of God. It has to be a reflection of the glory of God. And I was kind of, I don't want to say I, I didn't understand. I, I, I sort of understood what she said, but I kept thinking, this is all that I, I can 
get you in this price range. And she kept saying, no, I know my God, my God is good. And whatever we buy, it's going to, it is going to exude the glory of God. And you know what? The day that we walked into the right house, I knew that house with a little bit of paint was going to be to glorify God. It was beautiful. It had these beautiful high ceilings. It was more like a custom home in a gated neighborhood. It was beautiful. It shouldn't have even been the price that it was. Somebody had passed and uh, the heirs just wanted to get rid of it and it was priced like 70000 below market. I mean, unheard of. Don't call me for these kind of deals because they just don't happen. Uh, um, but, I, but this lady was holding on to her faith and she kept saying, no, whatever, whatever we buy is going to be to the glory of God. This is going to be beautiful. So you know what? When it came time for me to purchase my home, I, I kept passing over certain houses going, you know what? That just doesn't, that, that, I don't see that representing the glory of God. And, you know, the same thing with the house that I did end up purchasing is uh, with a little bit of paint, a little bit of elbow grease here, this house is going to be a reflection of the glory of God. And so here's my point, is that sometimes we, um, we overlook the gifts that God wants to give us. Sometimes we feel like we have to earn the gifts that God wants to give us. That we, well, we had to work harder for it. Now, I'm not saying we don't have a, have jobs. We do, we do have jobs. We do work. But sometimes we are working really hard to earn God's favor and, and to make things happen in our own power and our own strength. When in reality, our job is to stand in faith and to believe God, to believe his word that... Um, that he is good and that he gives good gifts to his children. And if we really believe that we are children of God, think about what a child is. When you come into this earth, you don't have a way of feeding yourself. You don't have a way of providing a home for yourself. You don't even have a way of providing love for yourself. As a child, your parents give you those things and they nurture you up. They give you all the elements that you need to be successful. They make sure that you have a place to live. They make sure that you, you feel loved. They make sure that you have that you have food and water and all those necessary things and to set you up for success. And God wants to do those things, same things for you and I as he sees us as his children. And I love what it says in Ephesians 3. It says that um, now unto him who is able to do, this is talking about God, uh, now unto him, God, who is able to do far exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could think or ask. That's a lot of wow, over the top. Uh, who is able to do far exceedingly, above, abundantly, above and beyond anything we could think, ask, or hope for, according to the power that works within us. The power that works within us. Okay, God wants to fill us with his power. But you know what? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's our faith our joined with the goodness of God that propels us forward. And so God has good gifts for you and I. And we've been talking about the power of praise. So if we understand that God is good, that is reason enough to praise him. And our purpose in life, our whole purpose in life is to praise him. God created us as a family to praise him. When we go to heaven, we'll see the angels and they're praising him, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is and is and is to come. Okay, so this is our purpose is to praise him and to be a reflection of his glory so the people around us understand and know that God is good. God is good. God even describes himself as love. If God describes and defines himself as love, we know that God is good. So here's the thing, is are you willing to accept it? Are you willing to receive the good gifts that God has for you? Okay, I know the question is gonna be, well, Julia, why was, why was Paul in prison? That doesn't seem so good. Guess what? Guess what? God works everything to the, together for his good. And you know what? Those, those times, those couple of years that Paul was in prison, he wrote, a lot of the New Testament, books of the Bible that stand 2,000 years later. 2,000 years later, this is the most famous book that ever lived is the Bible. And Paul had the privilege of writing it. And where did he write it? In his downtime in prison. Because <laughs> guess what? When you're in prison, there ain't a lot to do. And so this gave him the opportunity to do that. And he was still ministering to 
from prison. There were still people coming and going and, and, and communicating with him. Okay, so just because something doesn't look good on the outside to us doesn't mean that God can't bring glory through that. And we see that even in, in his imprisonment, even in his time where he didn't have a lot, God turned that around for his own good. And so I want you to be encouraged that no matter what you're going through right now, that as you start to praise him, as you start to glorify him, you're going to start to see the chains that have bound you just to fall off and that you're going to walk in the freedom and the peace that Jesus paid the price for. And you're, what you're going to walk out of is with a testimony, a strong testimony of the goodness of God. And I want you to be encouraged that your purpose in life is to bring glory and honor to your Lord and your Savior, to worship Him, to praise Him, and to bring Him glory. And you know what? In that process, we get the benefits of that. We get to live a really good life because as we praise Him, as we thank Him, God just enjoys bestowing gifts. Just like, at, why do we do Christmas? Why do we give our kids uh, gifts at Christmas time? Because we want to see their face light up. You know what? God is a good Father. He's a good father and he's got good gifts for you. He wants to see your face light up. He wants to see you excited. He wants to see you thanking him. He wants you to be spreading the word of his goodness to others so that other people will be drawn unto him. You know what? We wouldn't be people wouldn't be drawn to God if if they didn't know he was good. If they have a a, a misperception of him that he's up there, you know, hitting people over the head with a baseball bat from heaven, they're not going to want to to know our God. But once they see that God is good and that he's good all the time, they'll be drawn to him. And so just allow God to use your life as a testimony to his goodness. And you will be fulfilling the purpose that God has for your life as you give him glory and honor. So I want to pray for you. Thank you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you, God, that you are good all the time. God, that you have good gifts for your children, that you go with us and before us, and that the glory of the Lord is our rear guard. God, I thank you that your word says that you're a sun and a shield. You bestow favor and honor, and no good thing will you withhold from from those who walk uprightly. And God, I thank you that we are in right standing because of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a great Sunday. I know that God loves you and he's got a good and awesome plan for your life. Plans to bless you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future. All you have to do is call upon his name. Mm, have a great day.